So, today we'll be going over a weapon recently added into Warframe with the Dante Unbound update, and this weapon adds an interesting gimmick that was originally only found in the Ark of Titron and is Dante's signature melee weapon. This melee weapon being the Ruvox Incarnon. So, when it comes to the Ruvox, it's a very interesting weapon, as it doesn't follow the standard for the melee weapons we usually see, and instead follows its own gimmick, for it is to be quite useful whenever it comes to using the weapon. So, let's begin today with a couple of free punches. I see the enemies are not that high of a level, but this is for a reason that I will show later. Now, the Ruvax has all right stats for it being a fist weapon. It has about 26% crit chance, 20% status, and a crit multiplier of 2.20. Sadly, its damage overall is kind of meh, with its total being about 170. With about 1.25 meters of range, and its damage is sadly purely impact and when it which isn't the best especially when compared to other fist weapons which have puncture impact and slash now to activate incarnon you usually would get a times six multiplier but thanks to a incarnon evolution we can activate it at times three so when you activate the incarnon evolution as you see we go from a fist weapon to basically spikes you can basically call them like uh spike gauntlets is what they basically would become. Now, once we activate the Incarnon, we obviously get this nice little change, but our stats have also changed and stayed the same. Our crit chance stats and crit multiplier are all the same, but sadly our attack speed has decreased overall by 35%, but our weapon has gone from purely doing impact to purely doing puncture. So when we do hit punches, we will now be applying puncture and impact instead of just puncture, but I think the impact is because of the uh, because of having no stance. But with the Incarnon active, we now have gained 8 meters of range, which is important when it comes to the Incarnon's evolution, because as you'll see, whenever you do a heavy slam attack, you suspend enemies. But before we get into how the weapon full, uh, fully works with all the evolutions and the build, let's cover the evolutions so we better understand how this weapon works. Now, to carry on our conversation, the evolutions are quite interesting as well for this weapon. So, let's go ahead and get into the evolutions. When it comes to the evolutions, Evolution 1 unlocks the weapon, so we'll be skipping on to Evolution 2. Evolution 2 unlocks us our first three perks, those being Orc and Reach, Lethal Impetus, and Gathering Momentum. Orc and Reach will give us plus one range to both forms. Lethal Impetus on kill will give us plus 15% attack speed for 15 seconds, which will stack up to times three in both forms as well. And then finally, we have Gathering Momentum, which will give us plus 5% movement speed per combo multiplier in both forms. For this evolution, all options are good choices, depending on your build, but with how I want this weapon to work, I'm going to be going with Orc and Reach. Next up is Evolution 3. With Evolution 3, we get our next set of three perks, those being Shockwave Synergy, Seismic Slam, and Adept Reflexes. Shockwave Synergy will give us, for each enemy hit by the slam, for combo count. This applies to both forms. We have Seismic Slam, which gives us plus 6% slam radius, with, which also affects both forms. And then finally, Adept Reflexes, which will give us plus 15 initial combo, which obviously only affects the non-incarnon. Overall, all of these, but the last one is really good options, but for today's build, we'll be going with Seismic Slam. Next is Evolution 4, with once again another set of three options, those being Swift Transmute, Ternary Vault, and Inspiring Execution. Uh, Swift Transmute will give us a Incarnon hit at times three instead of times six. Ternary Vault will give us plus one mid-air jump. And then finally, Inspiring Execution will give us plus 30% combat count chance on finishers for 20 seconds. When it comes to Evolution 4, the only worthwhile one is, to me, Swift Transmute, because you don't really need another mid-air jump. And Inspiring Execution really doesn't do that much when I tested it. Finally, with Evolution 5, we are given our last set of three perks, those being Brutal Efficiency, Vulnerability Serum, and Permanent Perforation. When it comes to these... Brutal Fish Shield will give you plus 40% heavy attack Fish Shield for 20 seconds when impaling 5 or more enemies. Vulnerability Serum will make impaled enemies 35% more vulnerable to status. And then finally, Permanent Perforation will give enemies uh, 5 puncture status effects when impaled. 
Overall, when it comes to this evolution option, you can go with either uh, Brutal Efficiency or Vulnerability Serum, as both work quite well with this weapon's gimmick, but for today's build, we'll be using Vulnerability Serum. Now, let's go ahead and cover the builds. So, when it comes to the builds, I only have one build, because I really couldn't figure out how to build it otherwise with, like, lower-end mods, purely because of a mistake I made with forming. But the build still works. So, as you see, we have a slam build. The slam build obviously being called Come On and Slam, but you'll see a couple mods. Malcolm Morgan Shatter, Focus Energy, Prime Fever Strike, stuff like that. Obviously, if you don't want to do what I did by accident, you could obviously use Conditional Overload, but Conditional Overload does not, look, uh, does not work on the heavy melee. But it's not necessary. So, I have uh, 120 enemies, non-steel path first to just test how the weapon works normally. So, when it comes to how the weapon works, obviously, with our Incarnon Evolution, we can just punch till we get a times 3 multiplier. Obviously, it's going to work quite well on the low-tier enemies. Well, not low-tier enemies. Low-tier trash, I guess you can call them. So, try to get the free one like that, then slam, and then just repeatedly do this, because the enemies infect infected, affected by your spikes get affected by the slams you end up doing. Obviously, I'm not used to doing slam attacks, so I will be a little bit rusty. But try to get as many uh, impale options as you possibly can, because it does help, obviously. Now, as you see, I don't have any... Uh, where's the word? Any Warframe abilities. What if I mix the Warframe ability into that? Well, it helps it even more. Let's, let's mix and snare into this. Well, now all the enemies are clumped up. Well, now you don't need to slam. But obviously, they're low-tier enemies. But the weapon's main idea is to do this. Get a free slam, impale the enemies, and then just repeatedly slam them down and do this on repeat. But now, obviously, what if we did it with Steel Path? That will be up next. So, I went ahead and made the enemies Steel Path and maxed out their level. Once again... How does it work against higher tier enemies and steel path enemies? Well, it's still going to do quite good against the trash enemies. Let's proc our Incarnon and let's try to get another free one. Before we get the free one, though, obviously you're going to use abilities. My luck is horrible. As you see, I'm, I'm having a little bit of bad luck trying to get my uh, free melee, but as you see... Say you didn't want to use it like a slam weapon, it does quite well as a non-slam weapon. It stabs quite strong, since it's doing punch damage, we have Viral and Heat. I think it's Heat? I think I'm going crazy. Viral and Shock, my apologies. Viral and Shock. But obviously, let's try to get the stuff to work. Let's mix all the enemies together, and slam. Well, just keep doing it. And keep doing it. And keep going. AC... They'll eventually, I could learn to slam better, they'll just die. Just like that. Obviously, I can't slam efficiently, so he doesn't die, but you understand the gimmick about it. You're meant to slam and slam and slam. It's a slamming weapon. But again, you're not just going to use one ability. Well, my Frost is built to be an armor stripper. What if I armor strip them? Well, we do that. We do a couple slams. We press 4. We strip their armor and... Well, they die. So obviously it works quite well as a, a a crowd control weapon. I think that's the point of the weapon. I think the weapon was meant to be used for crowd control, to fight around it, etc. But obviously, you're not just going to have a frost. So I'm going to quickly show you a couple of uh, builds I think would work quite well. And then we'll get into Steel Path uh, missions. So, like I said, I would show you off some builds. Obviously, this is one of them. My Frost is built around being a armor stripper and a overguard builder. Obviously, with enough strength, I have 109, meaning all their armor will be ripped off. And with Ensnare, I make them get closer together. So obviously, as I just showed you a second ago, I'm going to put all the enemies together. I'm going to armor strip them, and then we can kill them. So we'll put them together. We'll go ahead and get our card on ready. Strip their armor. Slam. The only one who didn't die is the MOA. And there goes the MOA. So, that's one build you can obviously do. An armor strip with a, uh, what is the word? 
with this uh, crowd control, like, ensnare. Like, ensnare, sorry. Another one you could probably do that would work quite well would obviously be Hydroid. The whole point of Hydroid is being able to, well, strip off armor and apply Viral. So, how about we use Breach Surge instead of Nourish? We shouldn't need Viral because of um, Viral Tempest on the build. So, how about we mix those two together? Use your uh, Operator to pull them together. Apply this, do that, and then slam. Well, I'd say that works quite well as well. But, say you didn't have him either. There's another one you could use. Well, there's a lot. You could use Korra. You could use Dagath. You could even use Wisp, Naja to apply more status with the spears. Uh, Nova for her molecular... Prime? I was having a stroke, couldn't remember the name of it. Banshee even, Revenant obviously for everybody. You could probably use Gauss. Valkyr even works quite well. Purely because of her Warcry, so... With a Warcry, you gain the speed boost. Obviously, you'll get the speed, or speed energy. You'll pop your Warcry, so now you can attack even faster with your basics. Get your Incarnon to activate even quicker. Get your free one, do that, and then just start slamming. And well, obviously, it's still going to kill. Just sadly, I wish the enemies were a tad bit closer, but as you see... The whole point of it is to take advantage of, well, your abilities. What it feels like this weapon was meant to do is be a primer of some sort. But obviously, let's take this weapon into Steel Path, and I will see you guys there once I've made my build and went to the mission. So, here we are in Steel Path. Obviously, the mission just started. We brought the Ruvox, my Burston, my Lex, and we brought a Panzer Phyla, basically to help spread more viral, to help do a bit more damage. So, let's go ahead and begin. Obviously, I want to try and use as many abilities as I can to start off, because my Frost is basically built for Overguard health. And as long as I get the chance to impale an enemy, I'm going to take that advantage and impale them. So press my 4 to shred armor and kill anyone I possibly can, and just keep slamming. I'm obviously just going to keep doing it as long as I can. And as you see, the slam damage is quite high, as it's expected due to it being, well, mainly a slam-based weapon. And with the focus energy, instead of, like, a shock status mod, we are allowed to slam for free almost. Obviously, we're going to have our downsides to slamming because of eating our combo, but thanks to focus energy, we are allowed to slam without much worry mainly due to the fact that we are eating not that much uh, combo counter. Obviously, I can keep doing it, just keep slamming, shred armor, keep slamming, occasionally mess up and do that. Keep slamming, and a thing I forgot to mention earlier is the slam is very dependent on your combo count chance. So if you want to go ahead and go in for a couple of random hits at, well, random, obviously, you can go for it. Do that. Hit another one of these for some free overguard. Do that. Now, obviously, with the overguard on an enemy, it's a little annoying and a little obnoxious to, well, when that happens, to keep hitting them. And obviously, whenever you swap out of Incarnon, the slam still hits quite hard, as you see. And basically, that'd be the whole thing you'd be doing for the entire thing. Get your Incarnon to proc, like that. Slam heavy. And then just keep impaling them, like this. Shred their armor, or, well, depending on what you're doing. Ensnare them, pull them together, etc. Whatever, whatever you need to do to get them as close as possible to keep letting your build do your build, which is slamming them, basically get stronger and stronger, the better it is. So, I will get back to you whenever I can actually get an Acolyte to spawn, because they don't seem to like me all that much. Well, I'll be damned. The Acolyte has already spawned, mainly because I was taking my time. Being, I was going, like, extra slow. I also want to get rid of this guy real fast. There you go. So, let's shred off their armor. Oops, sorry, I, I forgot. And there you go. Which was kind of expected. I did kind of hit them with a direct hit impale. So, now, I'm going to go ahead and head back to my orbiter and give you my final thoughts on the weapon. So, overall, when it comes to the Ruvox and Cardon, that is... 
uh, just another fist weapon with a nice gimmick. I think it's quite fun. I think everyone should at least give it a try. Obviously, don't do what I did where you put an umber form on it. I don't recommend that at all. I still think putting conditional overload on it would do it better in the end. So obviously, if you want to, slap that there instead of what I did. But overall, it's actually not a bad weapon. It feels nice. It's good for crowd control. It's really good for being a nice gimmick. It's a nice slam weapon. Do I think it's going to be a meta breaker? Not even close. Is it fun, though? Yeah, it's actually quite fun. Obviously, you're not going to take it every still path mission you do. More people are going to bring their glaive with them. They're going to bring help dual liquors I've been having a lot of fun with. Hate, uh, Zaws. I doubt Dorkloff. But obviously, you get the point. It's not a weapon you're going to bring everywhere. It's just a fun gimmick. But uh, I had fun making it. I enjoyed using it. It's not bad. So make sure you guys like and subscribe So and turn on post notifications so you guys get notified whenever I make a video. And as well, tell me, once again, guns you want to see in the comments. I will do them, obviously, if I have them. I still want to do uh, reviews on the Dual Laker, which I plan on doing soon. Hate. Uh, Strun, I was about to say so much. I've already done so much Strun. I think there's another one in here I still need to do. Dread, I need to do. Uh, and obviously, Latron. There's still tons of weapons I have to do reviews on. But obviously, you'll stop hearing this mic hopefully very soon. I'm getting a new one, so hopefully you won't have to deal with the same one. But... I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.